Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number 18778silver, the website guildhallwealth.com. This is the bull market edition of The Real Money Show, and I'm joined by our fearless leader, Paul Wiseman, and my father. Great to see you, Paul. Nice to see you, too. Uh, it's been it's been a minute. Uh, the number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. If you are waking up on a Saturday and you're checking out the markets, you saw some massive rallies in physical gold and physical silver. You know, Paul. Just before we get into the numbers of it all, it was only a blink of an eye a, a minute ago when the price of gold was two thousand dollars an ounce, and we were going sideways from through December and January and we had to remind clients that hey we're trading at $2000 an ounce this is a huge huge uh, event that well, we I'm... should be trading here and yet less than than 4 months later here we are the price of gold actually broke $2400 today as we as we take <clears> the show i think we're back down but yeah, 20, your thoughts on 20, on the 20, last 50. your last on the last couple months well thoughts? it's it's been actually crazy because you know, we always sell more product at a higher price than we do at a lower price. Mm -hmm. um, today, the market came off a little bit. Uh, I've been watching, obviously, news, business news channels and reading the newspapers. Everybody is jumping on the bandwagon of gold hits, new highs, silver, you know, doing extremely well. It's Batman and Robin where one goes, the other goes. Um, but when we look at the market, today it sold off a little bit because the stock market Dow is down over 400 points today. The Nasdaq's down over 250. That's because J.P. Morgan came out and didn't come up with their real amount of money that they should have made. Maybe they didn't sell enough silver and gold and do enough skullduggery. But there's a lot of bad debt out there. They're still holding, putting aside a lot of money, the banks, um, for doubtful debt. Commercial real estate is definitely suffering. You know, I've been saying for months and months and months, interest rates are not coming down. I, you know, they were talking about three and four cuts. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, you know, during last year, they were giving people, whether it was UPS, whether it was airline pilots, 10% raises because the people, you know, if you shouted it, it. If you shouted the loudest, you know, you got it but they were giving 10%. That's 40% over four years. Now, how the hell are you going to stop inflation when you're giving 10% pay increases? Because you're going to pass it through to the, the consumer. Well, well, the best one I heard <clears throat> this week was uh, our premier. He didn't like the blue bins because all the grocery companies were paying 50-50 and the food manufacturing companies were paying 50-50 towards the pickup. It cost $100 million a year to pick the garbage, the, the packaging up. He wants them to take the full hit. Well, isn't that smart? Because what, don't you think the grocery companies are going to pass that extra $50 million on yeah. to the consumer? But he stood his ground on oh, the, yeah. wants the paper and, bags and back. They want paper bags back at the liquor store. But, you know, it's interesting what you're talking about there, a couple things to unpack there. One, one is that when the rubber hits the road and these companies now have to fend for themselves in, in many respects, you, you find out what's what's real. You know, yeah. there was that ESG thing forever, and it failed because eventually you got to pay for this stuff. Yeah, so cool. the 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 recycling and all of this stuff, you find out you find out down the road that you're not recycling nearly the much stuff that you're putting into the recycling bins. So don't you think these these stores are going to then find out? Hey, we don't need to recycle all of this. They're gonna. I'll tell you what they'll probably do. They'll have a good hard look at what they're recycling, and they'll say. We're not recycling this, 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 because we got to figure out how to cut the costs. And you're not actually recycling that anyway. It's going to a dump. Well, They'll well, figure it out, but it will be passed to the consumer. Well, all the corporations are making more money than ever. They haven't lost with inflation, with high interest rates. They just pass it on to the consumer. You know, last week they, the U.S. came out are, with... Are you, are you saying that the middle class got hollowed out? Well... Let's not even go there. But last week, the U.S. came out with, they created 300,000 jobs. I'm looking at a little thing today where companies are laying off. And these are huge companies from Amazon yeah. to Apple to Google. PayPal laying off 9% of their workforce, approximately 2,500 people. 
UPS. They gave them a 10% pay increase. Yep. Guess what? Laying off 12,000 people. Estee Lauder, people are not wearing makeup or buying perfume. They're staying at home. No, yeah, they're, they're staying there. at home. They, La- that was yeah. Laying off 3,100 people. Cisco, internet, 4,000 people being laid off. Expedia, 8% of the workforce. More people are going on holiday than ever before, and they're laying off 8%. Citibank. 20,000 people being laid off. We're not talking about even BlackRock, you know, in the mortgage departments and different divisions where they're just not doing, they, they're not making the type of money they should. They're just getting rid of people because they hired too many people to start off with. And Actually, there was a there was talk about that. I, I, I forget who was talking about this in an interview, that they rehired people after COVID and then they were very reluctant to get rid of them for a while because it was so hard to rehire people back. So I, in some ways, maybe what we're watching here as well is that these companies tried to hold on to staff as long as possible, and then the staff starts asking for more money, and all of a sudden, your back's to the wall and you have to make some decisions. But I want to get back to something else you were saying, Paul, about the, the Federal Reserve and, and their choices here. You know, CPI came in hotter than expected, 3.5% year over year from last March, and it's showing that the Fed rate hikes have done nothing. They've been useless to actually fight inflation. And the Federal Reserve wants to, wants to show their commitment. Powell wants to affirm his commitment to 2% inflation, which is essentially saying we want you to lose 20% of your purchasing power every decade. They want you to be happy about that. Well, if that's happened, it's already gone because we're down to about 2% of the value of a dollar right now. Oh, less than that. It's less yeah. than 1%. So, and the amount of interest that we're, well, we're not asked, but the U.S. are paying over a trillion dollars on the interest alone of what they borrow on their bonds. Yeah, the Federal Reserve's losing money. Of course, if you've borrowed money from the states, you're paying, you have to pay back with more interest now. But this, this thing about the interest rates, you know, there's like a pivot on the pivot. The fact is, is that they have a Sophie's choice. If they raise interest rates further, they hurt themselves because they're losing money. They're paying interest to the banks. And if they raise interest rates, they're, they're destroying the economy, which you've already just shown is, is systematically being destroyed by interest rate increases. So what do you do? Do you abandon the inflation fight altogether and throw in the towel and then inflation goes crazy, print a whole bunch of money? Or do you just try to sit tight as long as you can? Because I've seen this happen in the markets. You know, when we used to do financing, the best choice sometimes is just do nothing. And it looks to me like the Federal Reserve, Chairman Powell himself, is just putting his head in the sand and saying, I'll just say that I'm going to do something, but I'm actually not going to do anything. Yeah, but he's hanging in there too. Uh, the election in November. Um, you know, Biden's giving away all the student loans, $255 so million, dollars, whatever, uh, you know, to buy votes. Yeah. Um, you know, it, this is a, you know, the emperor's got no clothes. I mean, it's, it's simple. If you really look at the economy, if you look where they say it's, you know, 5% inflation, it's probably 10 to 12%. I mean, well, if you live in the real world, it's ten to twelve percent. Uh, if you live in their figment of imagination, then it's it's five, and I mean, and they're doing their best to keep it low at five. You go to an average restaurant today, and they charge for a bottle of sparkling water, anywhere from eight dollars to twelve dollars, or a bottle of flat water. Now, Does, what's the markup on that? They're trying to get back everything that they lost in COVID in one shot. It doesn't happen. It, People won't go out. They won't spend the money. People are eating at home now. Or they start taking cash. But it reminds you of, of all those morality tales about printing money when you think of Zimbabwe, right? All of a sudden, it's like our money's being, it becomes worthless overnight. And yet, this is a country which is now backing its currency with gold. Did you hear about that? I thought they were doing Bitcoin. Or no, they've crypto. decided they've decided to to back it with gold. So we'll we'll have to watch that developing story. But in the meantime, you know, gold was was up tremendously this week. In the last thirty days, gold was up ten uh, percent. Silver was up fourteen, almost fifteen percent. And then today, it was up even higher. Even though we've had started to see a bit of a pullback in the afternoon. But it has just been a tremendous run in the physical precious metals markets. In fact, earlier this week, they hit limit up. They hit the 
the circuit breakers in Asia where they had to stop trading. That's how strong the market was opening the entire week, and it didn't let up. I watch every evening uh, the markets in Asia. Yeah, I mark, look to see what's happening in Asia. Every night it's the same thing. The market goes up in silver and gold, gets to you know New York in the morning, and they start smashing it down. And or London first, and then New York. But that didn't happen this week. Uh, no, because you know people are starting to see that the only value, the real, 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 real money, is gold, silver, and hard assets. Whether it's natural, fancy color diamonds, art, antiques, stamps, even ball cards, you know that are rare, are holding their value. Money is dissipating. It's it's, it's vaporizing at an unbelievable rate, and people have jumped on Bitcoin because they're looking for instant gratification. Gold is for your golden years. That's all we look at. Uh, silver is an in, in a really great investment right now. It's trading about 84 to 1 to gold. Um, the normal ratio is about 16 to 1, so we've got a lot of room to move up. Um, you know, you can go to our website, guildhallpreciousmetals.com. You can buy gold and silver. You can call us. You can put product into an RSP, a TFSA, Lira, Lift, whatever uh, type of plan you do. We partner with Questrade on this, and we can facilitate physical gold and silver with bar numbers in registered accounts. And we also offer depository accounts if you don't want to put into a registered account, but you don't want to keep a product at home. I don't keep one ounce of gold or silver at home um, in this day and age I think it's really dangerous to take product home unless you've got a big garden where you can bury it or a pond in the back the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website guildhallwealth.com remember if you can't hold it you don't own it we only deal in physical the debts don't matter until they do and right now we're starting to see it all collapse so stick with us more to come on the real money show on 640 Toronto Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. It hasn't just been one solid week of precious metals. If, uh, you know, if you're just looking at the price, then you've learned something this week. We've always said, though, Paul, that seeing is believing for the majority of people, not necessarily the savvy people who have gotten in pretty early in precious metals, but a lot of people for seeing is believing. So when we're looking at silver... You know, we were very much on the cusp of thirty. I was thirty dollars. I was very surprised this week. I thought this was a market that needed to get above twenty-five. Because remember, we're talking February. The price of silver was twenty-two dollars. Less than less than two months ago, it was twenty-two dollars an ounce. I thought, okay, we've got to work our way up to twenty-five dollars, and as we get close to thirty, people will will realize. Wait, you know, we've had four or five runs at $30 over the last five years. We break that 30 range, people want to be on that train. And I thought it would take a while to get there, and we got there within a week. Yeah, but the thing is, it's getting harder and harder to find product. Um, there was a glut. You know, people were coming back. We were buying product. People were coming through the door. You know, because of interest rates, people have you know, still got to put food on the table. They've still got to pay mortgages. They've still got to pay rent. Um, which is, you know, it's tough on the middle class. Um, so when you look at gold and silver, it's real money. It, you can't print it. The, the government is not going to come along. You know, people have got this theory that the government's going to come in and confiscate all your gold and silver. It can't happen. It won't happen. People are too aware today. Everybody's got a cell phone. Um, well, it's not just that. It's uh, uh, I, I have to, first of all, I give credit to precious metal owners because they come they have these scenarios. They think of hypotheticals. They're outside the box thinkers. And so they come up with these they not come up with them, but they naturally will have these type of questions. And you know, we've gone over these type of scenarios with clients over and over and over again. And one of the things that really dawned on me within the last couple of months is this. The banks since they since they lifted the gold standard in 1971, the banks have done nothing but try to convince the public, we're talking for over 50 years, that you don't want to own physical gold. It's volatile. Why? Because they created the COMEX, the futures market, to create the volatility. They say, it's a pet rock. 
well, the central banks are buying it, so I guess they like pet rocks. Um, it doesn't pay a dividend. It's not supposed to. It's real money. It's, it's no counterparty risk. It doesn't pay. You're not investing with someone. They come up with everything to make you not want to own it. But if you insist, Paul, please, please buy this financial asset. Invest in the ETF. Invest in this gold fund. Invest in this pool account. Invest in this, in this certificate. Anything to not have you actually own the real thing. And, they've, and if you're saying that they want to confiscate, what you're really saying is they've done a really bad job of convincing 99% of the public that they shouldn't own it. You're yeah, saying well, they've done a bad job, that they all own it. They don't. If you have an ETF, a gold-backed fund, a certificate, a pool account, you don't own anything. So, so they, they, the powers that be, the banks, they won. So, of course, what's there to confiscate? I looked at we, – we put this out on our X. The amount of billions of dollars and ounces that the custodians own in these ETFs and funds. And it was just ginormous compared to outright owned physical assets. Well, only 3% of the world, and that's including central banks and investors and collectors, own 3% of gold and silver. Now, can you imagine if one third more started to decide to own gold and silver, 4% instead of 3%. There's not enough physical product to go around. Yet people buy Bitcoin that they can keep on manufacturing, which is amazing. Well, no, there's a limited in, in amount of Bitcoin. Who says? Well, I think it's, I think it's about the fact that th the difference is, is, this is the other myth in precious metals, is there's not enough gold. Well, there's always enough gold at the right price. You're saying there's not enough gold. Well, yes, there is. It's just that the price will be phenomenal that most people can't buy. The difference here, of course, is that Bitcoin can be $75,000, but you don't need $75,000 to buy it. You only need 100 You could put in 100 bucks. So the question, though, is you put in $100, it's got to go from 75 to 150 to double your money. It's got to go crazy, crazy high for you to double your money. And if you actually had to come up with the barrier to entry, the $75,000, economically, decision-wise, you would find better value. Here's a perfect case in point, whether you own precious metals now or you're thinking about it. When gold goes to, let's say, you know, Bank of America saying that gold will be at $3,000 next year. Okay, I think they're probably behind the eight ball on that one. But let's say it's just 3000 People are going to look at 3000 and say, I mean, a bottle of water at, at the restaurant's almost $3,000, right? Well. So they're going to look at $3,000 gold compared to what they spend in their day-to-day -day life, and they're going to say, that's expensive. Now, silver could be trading at $50, and $50 compared to $3,000 looks pretty cheap. I'll buy that one. And that's what's going to drive the price of silver even higher. And so I think that what's missing with Bitcoin is you don't get to make that economic decision of is that expensive or not, right? What can you buy for $75,000 if you had to come up with seventy five but, grand? But if we go back to what I was saying where the government can confiscate, people are worried about people, the government coming in and confiscating your gold. If gold is trading at $2,400, let us call it $2,400 US an ounce, and Bitcoin is trading at $70,000 U.S. an ounce, will they confiscate the Bitcoin because it's electronic or can they confiscate the physical product? So when people don't want to pay even to store it, people don't understand this. What we sell at Guildhall is physical product, not paper, not certificates, not ETFs, not futures, not options. We sell the physical product. Now, to get the physical product, it has to be mined. It has to go to taken over to a refinery it has to be refined it has to be put into bars it then gets shipped to wholesalers there's a lot of people handling this product there's insurance you know we're at the moment moving a lot of product to brinks it's a fortune to insure to to move from one location to another and and to your point one eight seven seven eight silver website guildhallwealth.com to your point Vince Lancy, who's a great analyst in the market, he was mentioning, which I think is, is good to always remember, that 
uh, he was doing this kind of comparison as well, is always be careful of convenience. Well, See, they always, like, why do they want everyone on digital ID? They say, oh, it'll be more convenient for you. Use, use debit cards. It'll be more convenient. Do all these things. What do you give up for conven convenience is the, is the question. And he's p positing back saying, you don't necessarily want the convenience if you want to make sure that you're having the asset that will protect you. But getting back to physical product, putting it in a vault, whether you're going into an RSP, a TFSA, some type of registered account, or you just want to, you've got funds and you want to put it into gold and silver, not all your money, maybe 10, 15% of your portfolio you want in physical product, you don't want to keep it at home, you don't want to put it in a safe deposit box because you're putting it back into the banking system, you want to keep it out of that. We use the vault of Brinks. It's insured with Lloyd's in London. You can't get insurance. To, if you take metal home and you've got $100,000 worth of gold sitting under the bed, call your insurance company and ask to see what they're going to charge you to insure $100,000. You can't even ship by FedEx $75,000 worth of goods. They won't accept it. Maximum. It, it makes you realize ship. it makes you realize that when you're talking to an insurance company or you're talking about shipping it across a country, you realize these people won't take on that risk because of the value of the product. Correct, right? Because it's because it's real. It's it, you know, gold and silver is real. So when we offer, you know, our fees are extremely reasonable for storing and insuring product. When you buy gold and silver from us, you get the bar numbers. Nobody does that. Nobody gives you the bar numbers. You can go visit the product. Nobody gives you the right to go visit the product and handle it. So what we offer, whether it's in a registered account with through Questrade or whether it's physical product that you want to store in the vault, or even if you do want to take it home, you know, you can buy a product from us through our e-store or call us and one of our people will look after you. But you can get involved, you know, in a small, we have combos where it's as low as, you know, 20, 25 ounces of silver, where you get silver maples and, you know, a 10 ounce bar of silver, just as a starter, just to, you know, dip your toe in the water to get something. Yeah, see what it looks like, see what it, it feels like. like you Watch know. it grow. You know, you buy something, you spend, you know, $1,000 and you see, you know, after a year, 18 months, it's worth $1,100, $1,150. It's better than having it in the bank. It's better than having it in a GIC. It's better having it physical that you can take it and sell it back anytime you want without any problem and get your money virtually that it's day liquid. or the next day. It's liquid. And we're finding, you know, during this last couple of months, it's been tough on people. You know, getting through the winter, you know, uh, you've got to put, clothes on the kids, you've got to put food on the table, cost of gasoline, you know, everything has gone up. Nothing is cheap. Insurance is going through the roof. So when people buy gold and silver, I mean, look at Costco. Are they aware that, you know, gold and silver is real? I mean, though they limit you to maybe when they have a special two ounces of gold, the only downside to that is they won't buy it back from you. Whereas Dealers like ourselves not only buy it, we sell. It's it's a great first place because you know most first ounces that you buy, you're never going to sell. Well, you can't get a hundred thousand right? dollars worth of gold. And they you, give you two bars. Right. So you're you're getting in the market. You're getting a sense of what it is. But it is also about relationships. You know, I have clients today. I was talking to. They said, "Well, will you help me uh, to tell me like when to buy and sell?" As though I'm a traditional advisor. And I said, "No, it, it it doesn't really work that way. We're we're more about teaching people how to fish." We're going to tell you what the value of the metal is and continue to educate you on value versus price and what to look for to understand the value that, the, that you're getting more purchasing power in these type of things. But then when it comes to figuring out what you're looking to do and how to strategize and exit, things like that, we can talk to you and, and have a conversation about what, what are the ways that our clients have done it? What would be the best way to maybe get rid of it? Like I had a client who was buying property in another country and we were saying, okay, well, if you sell, if you sell 30 ounces of gold, we'll take it from this tranche that you bought um, a couple years ago that you've made money on in this one, right? So we can work very closely with clients in that regard. But do we wake up and say, Bye, bye, bye. Sell, sell, sell. No, that's not what we do no, here. We, we don't get on the phone and drive people mad at 10 o'clock at night or 7 o'clock while they're having dinner. You know, we, you need to buy gold and silver today. I mean, those days are over. Boiler room, you know, doesn't happen. 
You know, we accommodate our clients. We babysit our clients. It's their decision. It's like, you know, buying a diamond. Really, a diamond picks you. You don't pick the diamond. It's always been that way. But you've got to get into this market. You need to buy gold and silver. You need to have some in your portfolio. It's a question whether you want to take a little home or you want to put into a vault or put even the, the safest thing and the best thing you can do. If you've never owned a TFSA, that's a tax-free savings account. You can put close to $90,000 into a tax-free savings. We've also got the one where if you've never owned a home and you want to put, put money in uh, to start a, a mortgage fund, we can put gold and silver into that fund. And we have a specialist, Nick, who looks after that. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. It's essential to protect your purchasing power today. Think about owning some physical precious metals. Remember, if you can't own it, if you can't hold it, you don't own it. Give us a call. We'll walk you through the process step by step. Again, it's Guildhall Wealth, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver and the website, guildhallwealth.com. Paul, I wanted to talk to you about um, an interview I watched this week with Ron Paul. He was on uh, David Lynn's show. And, uh, of course, you know, he wrote the book A Case for Gold back in the, the late 70s. And, you know, he was, he was very noncommittal with a lot of his questions. They asked about interest rates, etc. But then eventually the conversation got round to gold. And he was a lot more confident about, about the gold conversation. And he said, listen, of course, it was in his way. I love the way he talks. But he said, you know, in the 30s, it was, it was uh, priced at $25 an ounce. And by the mid-70s, they'd added a zero to it. And if you look at it today, they've added another zero to it. And it, this was the key. He said, and within my lifetime, they'll add another Within his lifetime, he's saying they will add another zero to the price line of gold. We're talking $25,000 an ounce. Now, that sounds absolutely ridiculous. However, if you take a couple things into context, maybe not. It's not, because for the simple reason, in the 70s, you could have bought a single detached home Scarborough for $35,000. Uh, it then went to three fifty. I mean, it's probably in the million dollar range. So you're saying you've seen it already I've in seen housing? It already. So you know, there's nothing new. But yeah. It, it, but you know, uh, I remember as a kid, my parents saying you go to the movie and it costs like nothing, you know, pennies. Today, you know, you need to take a bank loan uh, or two American Expresses to uh, buy a popcorn and a drink and whatever it costs to get in. Yeah. Um, but it's all relative. You know. Yeah, and, and I think that, um, you know, if the dollar's worthless, gold is priceless. But if you see 1980, the Dow went, was at a low of 850 points. Gold went to $850. That's a one-to-one -one ratio. In 2011, the Dow came off the bottom, was trading at 8,000. Gold went to 2,000. That was a four-to-one ratio. If the Dow is trading at 38, 39,000, I and mean, if it were to come off, you know, 35%, which would be a significant pullback, but if you think about how overvalued many of the stocks are and how concentrated it is in one area, it is possible. And if that were to happen, you'd be in the 25,000 range. And again, at a one-to-one -one ratio, gold would be at $25,000 an ounce. So it, it's actually not inconceivable, but to me, it's not necessarily about the price either. It's about the gain in purchasing power and making sure that you're protecting against inflation. Well, that's what it is. I mean, the dollar is is losing its buying power. If it's losing its buying power, so what is the opposite to that is gold and silver that is starting to move up. So, you know, we always talk about Roman times when, you know, it was 16 to 1, gold or silver, you could buy a pair of sandals and a... A toga, a toga, a belt, and a belt, and it would, you know, be one ounce of gold today. Yeah. You know, buy a, a suit and a pair of shoes or whatever. You know, you're in the twenty five hundred, three thousand dollar range anyway. Yeah, there was another post this week. They were saying, you know, in the thirties or something, uh, uh, you could buy a home for like seven kilos, and today it's still seven kilos in in America, not yeah. not in Toronto. Are you, uh, are you talking <laughs> gold or white powder? Gold. Oh, okay. Um, but. 
yeah, look, at, at the end of the day, we've, we've seen really good moves in the market. And the question becomes, is, is this something that's sustainable? I believe so. I mean, I, I, I just think, you know, gold and silver is going to keep on going up. The uses for gold and silver keep going up. There's more uses all the time that they come up with. Um, you need to have some gold and silver in your portfolio. I know people, you know, listen and, you know, the same thing. They don't even see it with diamonds. They can't see in a palm of their hand you can hold millions of diamonds, there, but they can see real estate. I mean, they see bricks and mortar. Speaking of diamonds, I, I didn't tell you this, but a couple of days ago, uh, they banned um, synthetic? synthetic from the JCK show. Did you hear about that? Well, it started in France. Yeah. You can't, you can't use the word mad, man made. They are synthetic. Yeah, I mean, and it's actually an insult to buy your wife or fiance a synthetic I, diamond. I totally agree. I mean, you know, what do you think of your wife? Well, I bought her a synthetic diamond. Yeah, like yeah. I went out and bought her a fake Gucci bag. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Like, it's fake. Yeah. It looks the same. It's the same effect. They yeah, work. except that, do you know what happens yeah. in that case? Um, you know, I once, uh, uh, someone I knew sold me a fake Panerai watch. It's an Italian diver watch, and they start at like $7,000. I was seven, like, oh, what? Seven dollars? Seven grand they start at, but the fake one, I bought, I don't know, $50 or something. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I've never had like a fake whatever. And um, I was wearing it, and a guy came up to me in a coffee shop, and he said, that's a, that's a nice watch. I go, yeah. He goes, is that a fake? <laughs> it's so embarrassed because it, it was obvious. It wasn't like... I looked like I was made of money or anything. I was young, and it was obvious that I didn't really own that. And it's just one of those things. Like, why would you buy something fake? And it kind of translates to gold investments versus gold ownership as well. You wouldn't go out and buy an investment in a home. You have to actually go out and buy the home, yeah. right? If you can't take delivery of that product, why are you holding it? It's the same thing with Bitcoin. You know, these the Bitcoin, they love the ETFs. Oh, it's going to bring all this money. Okay, but these are the people, who, the people buying into the ETF are the people you browbeat. That if you don't understand it, screw you, right? They browbeat you. They go, you don't understand it. You don't understand it. Okay, but the people who are buying it are in the ETF are the same people you browbeat. And the people, the reason the ETFs are so great for BlackRock is because they're the custodian. They own all of that Bitcoin, they're not the people who who are buying the ETF. So they're, they're if you are going to do it, of the if you're going to do it, you might as well buy the real thing. So it doesn't hurt to own the real thing. And yes, it's a paradigm shift to actually own real assets. But you know, gold's up four hundred and ninety percent in the last twenty years. You kind of sit back. You go, did I need to own anything else? I mean, not that there's anything wrong with investing, but if you're up 490% in 20 years, you got to ask yourself, if did you really need anything else? And it's liquid. And it's liquid anytime you want. We've had people who needed to buy a home. You get that a lot in the precious metals market. You know, um, hey, we just, put a, uh, we just put a bid in on the home and I need 100 grand real fast. Yep, done. Yep. Right? No gathering and all of that type of stuff. No borrowing. There it is. So think about physical precious metals. It's a haven, a shelter from these economic uh, times that we're living through and a way to protect yourself. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver 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 The website, guildhallwealth.com. More to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. So, Paul, as I mentioned earlier, Bank of America is calling for $3,000 gold next year. So they see, they see room to run. We saw the CPI was hotter than expected. So the Federal Reserve is caught that their, their interest rate hikes hasn't really worked. Kind of throws out the idea of interest rates being uh, cutting interest rates and letting it run hotter. But by the way, I, I'm sure you remember back in 2006, six seven. Five, Greenspan was raising interest rates every a quarter point every time they got together, and the price of gold wasn't dropping. Maybe on the day, I mean, there's anything can happen on the day, but the gold price was rising through that whole period. It's almost to say that if they were raising interest rates, the market saw that as you're fighting inflation. You mean there's inflation? Maybe I should own some gold. Well, owning gold and silver 
is a safe, safe investment. You know, it can't, it's not a stock that can go from $100 down to zero. Um, it costs too much money today to bring it out of the ground. Mines are not hedging anymore. Um, it, it doesn't make sense to own something. I mean, they say gold doesn't give you any interest, you know, whatever it is. It does. It's a protection. It's an insurance policy. Gold and silver has been around for thousands of years and will remain around for thousands of years when all the fiat currencies go in the dumper. And eventually they will because you can't keep on printing money. I mean, they're trying to take cash away from the public anyway. They want to be digital. Well, you that's the whole thing about the confiscation because uh, uh, you sit there, people will say, well, I'm worried about you know actual hot, hard fascism. And you say, listen, 40% plus income tax. That's highway robbery, stealing you blind before they steal the car out of your driveway. Then there's the taxes you pay on top of that, 13%. Then there's inflation. They say, oh, we're targeting two. I know it's at five. It's really at 10. 70%. You're, you, I'm a debt slave. You're a debt slave. Nick's in the room here. Nick, you're a debt slave. Everyone listening to this, you're debt. If you, if you are paying income taxes while they're printing billions of dollars that they can't earn as a government and hire hundreds of thousands of people that you in your car right now are paying for them well they came out yesterday i think it was 87 it's all theft 87 percent are not in favor of true to the way he's spending money um you know it's it, it's the economy stupid yeah it's got to be the economy remember bill clinton's uh, carvel guy but we need to educate people to the fact, you know, we, we're not financial advisors, but we give people enough information. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. We can give you enough information to show you where gold and silver is going to go. If you, you know, when you go into the, a bank or you go into some institution and you want to buy a registered account and some 19-year-old says, are you passive or aggressive? Oh, if you're young, you've got a long time, you can, you know, take your time and whatever it is. I wanted to, to. You can't take your time. Yeah. You've got to, you know, you work hard for your money. You have to protect your money and protect what you've got. Uh, no one's going to tell you what to do. They want to take advantage of you. We don't take advantage. We don't tell you how much to put in. We don't set, you know, limits to how much you can buy, how much. Yeah, we you can, can have sell. a conversation with you yeah. and, you know, figure out what works. What, what, like, what we want out of clients is for them to feel good about what they're doing. And that's usually how a conversational goes. Says, how does that feel? How does that does that seem like well, where you want to uh, be? And we talk about the good, the bad, the pros, the cons with it, potential ups and downs, so that they can make that decision. I'm I'm 76 years old. I've been selling since I was 16 years old. That's 60 years. I've never had to beat somebody up and phone them a hundred times and pester someone to buy something. You know, as a salesperson, you've either got to be knowledgeable. Or you've got to be pretty smart to win somebody over. You also have to, to like your product. Yeah, but you've also got to be liked yourself. If somebody doesn't like you, they're never going to buy anything from you anyway. So, uh, you know, there's lesson number one. So w one other thing before we go. We've got a, a few moments left here. But just I just wanted to just yep. carry on. You get three things when you buy something. You get price, you get delivery, and you get service. To get all three, if someone's offering you the product below cost, they don't have the product. They're it, looking for the cash and, you know, the service you know, goes right out the window. It, it's ironic that, you know, today we're talking with some new clients and, you know, you're, you're, how do you explain the value of the metal? And, you know, you're in the business. You, of course, everybody, if you're new to something, the only thing you have control over is price. So they'll say, you know, how can, can you help me? What, you know, can you do better? Uh, of course, we can do better. And it's just ironic that we're sitting here on a day where the price of gold is $2,400 an ounce, and I'm trying to do better for you, but the market, if you purchased it two months ago or a week ago, did better for you. But so the key here is to get in early, dip a toe in the water, average into the market, hold money back for dips. Hopefully they, you know, we're going to get them. Nothing goes up in a straight line. And so there's a strategy for, for getting the best rate in the market that doesn't depend on someone sharpening a pencil necessarily. There's more ways than one. But as an example, somebody called, somebody called in this morning and wanted to buy some gold. 
We quoted them a price. They came back and they they said, oh, I can get it for this price, which was below spot and below no FX charges and nothing. How can you... The product can't be there. It can't. It's either not real product, it's used product or secondary product. It's not packaged. Yeah, there's that. There's that analogy. There was that story of, uh, you know, well, I always say, it's Christmas time. Here's the here's the price of the TV. Here's the other place they've got it on for thirty percent cheaper, but it doesn't deliver until a month from now. Six weeks. <laughs> right. So what difference does it make? You're not going to have it for Christmas. So there, you know, there's always a, a little bit of a catch, but. If you've, if you've missed one of our radio shows, you can always catch us on YouTube. Just go to Guildhall Wealth or look up The Real Money Show on YouTube and you'll find us. And, of course, you can go to our website, guildhallwealth.com. The number, one eight seven seven eight silver And, uh, Paul, great to chat with you. 30 seconds. Yeah, I, I just want to let people know, you can get into the market. We have, we have combos as low as 25 ounces, 50 ounces, 100-ounce package, a 200-ounce package, gold. You can buy 5 grand, 10 grand, 1-ounce gold bars, 10-ounce gold bars, kilo gold bars. We don't force anybody. We don't pick anybody's pockets. We don't make you know, choices for people, you make your own choice. Uh, and we're happy to look after you. Yeah. And, you know, 30% of our business comes from referrals. So guess what? We must be doing something right. Yeah, you can see our, our um, reviews on Trustpilot. Absolutely. And uh, again, also follow us on X. We're putting out some great stuff on X. Please follow us there. Thank you for everyone for joining and listening to us this week on The Real Money Show. Paul, thank you. And we can't wait to speak to you all next week. The Real Money Show, 640 Toronto. <laughs>